I got involved in the project because I was, when I first read the script, I was surprised by it. And it's, that's pretty rare in the 16 years that I've been working as an actor. But you do get surprised. It, uh, I thought it was going to be one thing, and then um, I found myself being uh, thrilled and excited by the pilot episode, which I kind of anticipated, but it also moved me and I found it very, very funny. And that combination of factors, I think, is pretty essential to, to good, compelling drama. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the team was uh, immaculate. Uh, AMC, Frank Darabond, Galen Hurd, your man here, and Greg Nicotero. Uh, it's just a, a kind of Hollywood wish list, really. And, um, and the part, the part is spectacular. I wouldn't say I carry the whole thing, I'm just the busiest. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of terrific other actors in it as well. It really it is an ensemble piece. It begins a kind of one, as a one man's journey, but this cast is one of the most spectacular casts I've ever worked with. Amazing actors. This is the first time I've had a chance to play a wife and mother, and, and Laurie's, um, Laurie's drive is so clear and so pure, and yet she makes such catastrophic mistakes along the way. You know, I mean, this is a character who we went to the, I went to the screening uh, a couple of days ago and everyone who walked out was furious with me. And I sort of thought, right, this is gonna get worse before it gets better. And that's nice. I mean, the first thing I look for in a character when I play them is their flaws. And Lori's are right up on the surface. And yet I really believe that she's this incredibly powerful dynamic matriarch. And so the, the tension between those two things is really exciting to play. Um, and it's also just, it's insane. I mean, I read the pilot and thought, this is crazy. I'd never read a comic book, I'd never seen a horror movie, and which, which makes me a natural for this thing. Um, <laughs> I've seen a horror movie. And you know, one. Oh I tried to watch Zombieland last week, and I had to turn it off because it scared me. <laughs> the first issue came out in October, October 2003, okay. and uh, we're reaching our 80th issue now, so it's, it's been going for about eight years. Frank Darabont, the, the writer, director, and the pilot, executive producer, he discovered the comic book and kind of fell in love with it and decided that it was something that he wanted to adapt and then he got in touch with my people and my people talked to his people and talked to other people and then we had a TV show. <laughs> so it's a pretty simple Sounds process when it gets down to it. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to have Frank Darabont kind of championing from his side of things uh, from the very beginning. Uh, and it's something that uh, AMC, uh, the studio, is uh, wholeheartedly committed to. Um, they're really pushing boundaries with that and making sure that you know they do everything right. I mean, they're setting out to do a zombie show, and so they're definitely going to be doing a zombie show, which is something that's very important. You don't want to just water it down because then it kind of ceases being what it's supposed to be. Uh, but on top of that, uh, it, it's really just a character study and, and a, a really gut-wrenching drama. The, the zombies end up being a, more of a backdrop, and that was something that I was also trying to focus on and make sure that that uh, kind of shown through from the original source material, just because I didn't want it to just be a, a gore fest and an action thing. It's it's very much about these characters and uh, the actors that play them. So I've been on some pretty big films in, in, in my time, but this completely blew all of them out. When I sat on top of the horse and they shut down four blocks of Atlanta <laughs> and uh, made this apocalyptic kind of world. It, it was an environment. It was astonishing. The the, the care and detail and design. And, yeah, it, it really is a, it is a movie, and Frank shot it like one as well. I mean, it's beautiful, some of the... Some, and, he, and he brings the camera out. It's really lovely, and I think it's very brave, the fact that it's so silent as well, yeah. the first episode. What I'm sort of starting to understand is that the blood and the gore and the violence and all the things that I can't watch, because I did watch a good chunk of the pilot through my fingers, even knowing that it was coming. That staircase scene destroyed me. I had nightmares, actually, last night. Anyway, um... What, what I'm finding... Thanks, Robert. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Bags under my eyes are all yours. Um, I, what I'm finding is that you you actually need it. There's nothing gratuitous about it because you, you have to let the audience know these people are pushed so far beyond the pale of what they thought they were capable of. They've been living in fear, in just a wash of adrenaline and exhaustion and grief and loss and misery for so long that they're really capable of anything. And what that buys us as actors is the ability to take these huge risks and do things that I mean, in, in most other parts you really can't do. And so what I'm kind of starting to realize is that 
these zombies and the things that they do to us and the things we do to them, they're actually dramatically really important to creating the kind of characters that I think make the most compelling story. If you take the zombies away, what my character does in the pilot, she's just a bitch. If you put her in a context of having lost everything, sorry if you need to believe that, I'm American. Nice. Um, if, if you, when you put her in a context, she's a woman desperately reaching out to try and make a connection with something that's alive. And so one story is one that alienates an audience, and understandably, I think another one is one they can connect to. I'm advocating zombies here. Mm. We have time on our side as well. Yeah. We're not sort of, we don't have to adhere to sort of a two hour slot where we go, this is the bit where we shock everybody. Right. And there's, we have to have there's, a, res minutes of there's a resolution days. now. I think that we've got time to play with characters. And there are some episodes, as, as we've been saying, that you, the, the, the zombies are incidental. I got there early. I took it very, very seriously. If someone's going to ask you to do this, you want to make sure that that's kind of in place, particularly. Uh, because of the nature of the show, and I didn't want to be thinking about an accent. I wanted to be thinking about zombies, frankly, and the the enormity of the sort of what the journey that he goes through. So I wanted it to be a secondary consideration. I took it very, very seriously. I had a, I had a voice coach. I got to uh, the most important thing is getting to Atlanta and getting a sense of place, because it wasn't just doing an accent. It's actually trying to, trying to trying to hang and get. You know, the, the, the more I worked in America, the more I realized culturally I had a lot to learn, you know, and that was the great fascinations for me and uh, excitements for me. And I loved this role and I loved working in Atlanta and with the people. And Frank asked me to stay in dialect. So I just made lots of mistakes and people corrected me and eventually it became, I practiced hard enough. And then, uh, when I started talking like this, people got freaked out because they went, why are you putting on this stupid accent? So I took that as a... I took that as a we did have local crew who didn't know Andy was English. I mean, he, he, he really... I think he really knocked it out of the park. I just found out today. <laughs> I am, Never I, would have cast him. I am actually American, and this is a terrible English accent. <laughs>